Hello and welcome to the fourth of the lectures in this week under the course title Approximate Reasoning Using Fuzzy SEPTL, a course offered through the NPTEL platform. In this lecture, we would look at the essential difference between fuzziness and probability. Let us take a quick peek into the concepts that we have covered over the course of this week. We looked at the theoretical and practical motivation that led up to introducing fuzzy sets. We now know that a fuzzy set can be thought of as capturing a concept. We have seen fuzzy sets as a generalization of classical sets, essentially moving from the characteristic function, which was a function from the domain to the set with 0 and 1, to membership functions, which is a mapping from the underlying domain to the entire unit interval 0, 1. We have specifically seen the impact of the context on the representations that we can obtain. In this lecture, we would deal with two types of uncertainty, which are randomness and weakness. Both fuzziness and probability capture different types of uncertainty. While probability deals with randomness, fuzziness deals with vagueness or ambiguity. Allow me to explain this in the rest of this lecture. When we talk about probability, we assume there is a random experiment that is being conducted. Now, what kind of experiments qualify to be called as random experiments? There are three properties that such an experiment should possess. The first of them is repeatability. Second, from the experiment, all possible outcomes must be known even though the one that is currently going to come out is not really known. Finally, we should also ensure the experiment possesses regularity or statistical regularity. That means after a few trials, large enough trials, a pattern should emerge. Now, what is probability? Let us consider the basic coin toss experiment which as we know is or can be qualified as a random experiment. Interestingly, when you toss a coin, the result is unknown while the coin is in the air. However, once the coin drops to the floor, it is easy to verify whether you got a head or a tail. So probability exists before the experiment or hypothetically even without doing the experiment. Now, how does this compare with fuzziness? If I, if we pick up this coin and toss, while we might discuss and debate on whether we would get a head or tail at the end of the toss, imagine the coin has fallen down and this is the side of the coin that we are seeing. Now, we need to decide whether it is a head or a tail. Now the experiment is over. After the experiment, there is no randomness. We are able to see the outcome. But now we are not able to decide the outcome. It could have been this coin that you picked up or this coin or this coin. Now we are wondering, is it a head or a tail? Here, in fuzziness, it is not lack of information, but it is not a being able to decide even with all the given information, that is what is leading to the uncertainty. Let's play a game. We have a screen and now a question is asked to us, what is behind the screen? Now it could be any one of the zillion things that we have in the universe. It could be a picture of a child eating ice cream. It could be a picture of a scenic place. It could be a portrait of a great personality. Or it could be a snapshot from a sports video. It could be any one of a million possibilities. So 
if you are asked to guess what is behind this screen then the entire universe that whatever you could photograph and put behind the screen forms the sample space however let us see whether we can get more information now if you are given the information that what is behind the screen is actually a geometric figure now this reduces the sample space considerably now given this information let us pick 15 such geometric figures and consider it in the present scenario let us begin with the simplest of the shapes the circle a rectangle a hexagon a pentagon a triangle let us be a little more adventurous and pick some more such figures including the heart shape a crescent and some free flowing curves a symbol that closely resembles the r class once again a free flowing curve something that resembles a horseshoe magnet and a thick end arrow perhaps now with the given information and considering only these 15 figures as part of our sample space we need to make a guess now in the absence of any other information uniform prior is what you assign to each of these which means the probability with which the figure hidden behind the screen could be a circle is 1 by 15. So let us start filling these boxes with the corresponding probabilities. Now we get a little more information that it is a regular closed figure. Now this information allows us to revise or reduce our sample space. Now we are given the information that it is a regular closed curve. Immediately we see that this is not a closed curve. So is the case with this. Now, since we are given the term regular, let's understand this in terms of common usage, which means you could immediately exclude this figure. So now from the 15, we are immediately able to exclude three of them with a given piece of information. However, now out of this 15, we have reduced the sample space to 12 and this calls for re-evaluation of probabilities. Once again, using uniform prior, we see that the probabilities for each one of these geometric figures turns out to be 1 by 12. Now, we are given yet another piece of information that it is a finite sided polygon. Once again, going back to this table, we see that this immediately eliminates the circle, this figure, this, the heart shape, the crescent and as also the horseshoe magnet. So we reduce the sample space from 15 to 12. Now a further six of them are excluded. Now we are left only with six out of the original 15 figures that we considered in the sample space. Once again, this calls for re-evaluation of probabilities. Again, using the uniform prior, it is one sixth for each of these figures. Notice that with more and more information coming our way, the probabilities that we have assigned on each of these objects is getting re-evaluated and reassigned. From all of them, to begin with, they had 1 by 15 as their value. Some have gone down to 0 and got eliminated. Some came up to 112, again got eliminated, and some currently are remaining at 1 by 6. Now, let's see whether we can get some more information. Now, we are given this piece of information that it is actually a convex polygon. Now, with this information, we are able to immediately exclude these two options. So, further reduction by 2 from a sample space of current sample space of 6. Once again, re-evaluating the probabilities, we see that it's one fourth on each of the four figures that remain. Do we have any more information coming our way? Well, we now are actually given, going to be given a sneak peek into what is hidden behind the screen. Now, the moment we see this figure, we know that we can go back here and exclude two among these four. 
the rectangle and the triangle. Once again, re-evaluating the probabilities. Now, among the choices that we made to be put in the sample space, now there are only two such possibilities, that of a hexagon or a pentagon. And with no further information forthcoming, with uniform prior assigned to them, it could be either hexagon or a pentagon. The point that we are trying to drive home here is that with more and more information seeping in, we are able to revise our probabilities. But now probabilities are actually assigned to a random experiment. Now the question is, how was this object picked from and hidden behind the screen? Now, this was done in a random manner. So among the different possibilities, randomly one such object was chosen, a geometric figure was chosen and hidden behind the screen. Now let's remove the screen to see what we have behind the screen. Now there is neither a hexagon nor a pentagon. But this does not discredit the procedure that we have followed. In a sense, probability deals with randomness and it is a lack of information that leads us to make play this guessing game and with more and more information coming our way, we are actually revising the probabilities. Note, once we are shown the object, we are not guessing anymore. We know clearly it is a finite sighted polygon with seven sides. Allow me to play a different game with you now. Once again, we have a screen and there is something hidden behind the screen. Now, we are asked the same question, what is behind the screen? We are not going to be given information in bits and pieces. In fact, not even a partial uncovering of the screen, we actually would remove the screen. We are actually being shown the object. Now the question is, is it an ellipse or an oval? Clearly, you would say that it is neither an ellipse nor an oval, but you would perhaps say it is more or less an ellipse or perhaps a fuzzy ellipse or a fuzzy oval. Now, in probability, due to lack of information, we are making a guessing game as to what could be hidden behind the screen. What is that object? And we are, without the full information, we are trying to decide whether that object belongs to the class of heptagons or pentagons or one such regular geometric figure. Whereas in fuzziness, on the contrary, we have all the information about the element, about the object, but now we are wondering not whether it belongs to the set of ellipses, but to what extent it could belong to that set. Much like what we have seen in one of the previous lectures about the ball with different shades of blue, and we, are left, we were left wondering whether it belongs to the set of blue balls. To recap, both fuzziness and probability deal with two different types of uncertainties. While fuzziness deals with vagueness that comes about because of lack of clear boundaries between sets, probability deals with randomness. So it is a question of whether it belongs in the case of probability without all the information to how much it belongs in the case of fuzziness having given all the information. With this, we come to the end of this lecture. In the next lecture, we will look into some important notions related to fuzzy sets. We will see a few types of classifications of fuzzy sets, some components of fuzzy sets, and as we know, fuzzy sets being a generalization of classical sets, we, there is a need to also import or export the different concepts, properties of classical sets to the setting of fuzzy sets. For instance, the case of subset home or that of cardinality. We will see some of these notions, only but only those that are relevant for the rest of the course. Once again, allow me to refer you to some research level articles. Most of what have covered in this lecture has been based on this excellent paper by Bart Kosko 
which is also titled Fuzziness versus Probability. Professor Zadeh himself, even as early as 1968, has discussed the relationship between probability and fuzziness. Not only in this paper, even a little later, almost after 20 years, we had another paper under the title Fuzzy Probabilities. In these two papers and other related works, he argues that often the information about an event itself is imprecise. For instance, he gives an example saying that among the 20 tosses of a coin, several more were heads than tails. And he insists that these can be very nicely captured using fuzziness. So he looks at a happy marriage between fuzziness and probability. If you think that these works have been done only 20-30 years back, no, these are still relevant and there is a lot of work, activity, research activity that is being done relating these two areas. One such case in point is that of a recent work done by Professor Fierton on fuzzy Bayesian inference. And of course, if you were to look into uh, other resources on the internet, I am sure you will find many, many more relating these two very interesting and useful concepts when it comes to analyzing data and making sense of them either in terms of inference or reasoning or decision making. With this, we'll stop here. Thanks for your patient listening and hope to see you soon in the next lecture. Thank you.